We are very warm welcome. I am your host Malik Mazur Ahmed from Channel Five in the program of Diplomatic Enclave. And today it's a immense pleasure for me that today I have with me the Honourable His Excellency the Ambassador of Russia Federation Alexey Jadov is with me. Excellency, uh, I am highly grateful to you for your precious time. And as you know that uh, both the country have uh, seen many ups and downs during the different period of Pakistan history. and no the both the countries are extending cooperation in many fields so first of all uh, i warmly welcome you here in islamabad the ambassador of russia here in pakistan how do you describe your appointment in pakistan and how do you see the relation between the two countries uh, in the diplomatic and political circle well first of all thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to address to Pakistani people to Pakistani TV watchers assalamu alaikum uh, actually it is my already third year of uh, stay in Pakistan and uh, i should uh, assess it as a very positive from the very beginning of my uh, appointment here of my arrival here i felt a very warm welcome in various circles of uh, Pakistani society it is uh not surprising because uh, the relations between our countries are currently uh, on the rise especially in uh, political fields and they are acquiring more and more multifaceted character as for pakistan itself uh, we assess uh, your country as a, a very important force uh, regional wise and internationally wise and uh that's why i uh, assess my personal appointment here as uh, quite important and of course i will try uh, to do my best and uh, trying to do so to uh, further improve uh, and develop uh, our cooperation in various fields his excellency as you know that pakistan and russia have seen many ups and downs in the history and uh, these relations seem to be moving towards better in the recent past what are your comments uh, for the betterment the relation in the future well uh i wouldn't say that uh our relations are improving from the recent past uh because the time uh time moves time passes uh, very quickly and uh what i should say i absolutely agree with you that our history was the history of ups and downs we had a very good uh, relations especially in economic field in 60s and 70s but uh i would mark uh the start of the improvement process from the uh visit of prime minister nawaz sharif uh, to russia as uh, long ago as in 1999 so as you can see already uh, 15 years passed since that time and since that time our relations are uh, gradually improving independently of uh, what government is in power in pakistan and we are greatly satisfied uh, with this continuity of the course of uh, pakistani leadership of course uh, the uh, recent development of our relations are uh, directed at uh, further at acquiring uh, new quality for it for example uh, we open some new stratas like uh, military technical cooperation military cooperation which started from uh, the visit to uh, Pakistan of our minister of defense uh, mr shoigu uh, in uh, november uh, 9 uh, november 2014 uh, then uh, we started our military technical cooperation uh, the deal about uh, four helicopters is well known which would uh, definitely strengthen the anti terrorist uh, potential of uh, pakistan and of course we are trying to uh, develop our relations uh, along the traditional uh, directions uh, like economic cooperation uh, some joint projects uh, the largest of which as you know is uh, the project of a uh, gas pipeline from uh, karachi to lahore which is called uh, south uh, north pipeline the gas will flow from south to north or north south uh, whatever you like and uh, uh now it is on the stage of developing the contract it's uh, going on well uh it was uh, one of the major 
subject of discussions during uh, the recent visit to Russia of uh, Pakistani Minister of Petroleum, Mr. Abbasi. Uh, then we have some uh, other proposals on the table, table like uh, some uh, hydroelectric power station, traditional uh, power stations then uh, railways, transportation, so well it's uh, geological survey, many fields, many fields and of course uh, we should attach our uh, efforts to uh, uh, reach some uh, concrete results because uh, unfortunately, unfortunately the level of trade, uh, I'm not meaning just joint projects, it's just pure trade Unfortunately, it is uh, declining, and the statistics of last year is uh, quite unsatisfactory. Uh, the volume of our uh, bilateral trade uh, hardly reached uh, 400 million uh, dollars. Uh, it's less than uh, the previous years, and even less than the year before previous. Uh, in better times, it reached uh, over uh, 600 million dollars. Uh, of course, uh, this is um, also due uh, to the fact that uh, world economy is also slowing and uh, we uh, can observe uh, the just uh, shrinking the trade of between many countries. It's and uh, Russia-Pakistan trade is not all uh, an exclusion, but anyhow, uh, we shouldn't get uh, to the temptation to leave it as its own way, we should still take efforts to improve the situation. And one of the mechanisms for improving it is uh, our uh, Intergovernmental Commission for Economic Cooperation, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, had its uh, recent meeting uh, in uh, November uh, last year. Mm -hmm. By the way, it was to a certain extent a unique meeting because for the first time uh, it was accompanied by the uh, Pakistani-Russia Investment Forum. It's for the very first time. Okay. And uh, we uh, strongly hope that uh, next time when uh, the meeting will take place, when the meeting takes place in uh, Moscow, it would also be accompanied by, of course, now second investment forum, which actually will be the main tool uh, for uh, establishing direct personal uh, connections, contacts between business circles of our countries. Excellency, very uh, detailed you have described the whole bilateral relationship between the two countries. Uh, as we know that Russia has been the world and the regional in very important parts. How does your country can play a very positive role for the sustainable peace and stability in South Asia? Of course, we are trying to uh, play uh, our role uh, to be instrumental in providing peace and uh, stability in South Asia. Uh, in this connection, we uh, cooperate with uh, Pakistan. And uh, I should say this cooperation has uh, various directions. First of all, it's uh, coordination of our anti-terrorist uh, efforts. We have a joint working group. Uh, on terrorism which meets from time to time. Uh, then we have uh, the respective work on the working level. Uh, we also cooperate in uh, bringing uh, peace and uh, stability reconciliation to Afghanistan. Uh, for example, uh, our countries are parts of uh, various formats uh, like tri trilateral format like uh, Russia, Pakistan, China and more extensive formats like uh, 6 plus 1, uh, then uh, also a group, uh, various working groups of uh, Heart of Asia, Istanbul process. Uh, well, as uh, our spectators probably remember, uh, the last uh, ministerial meeting of this group took place in uh, Islamabad, and uh, next one uh, will take place in uh, New Delhi. Uh, besides this, uh, we also cooperate in uh, various dimensions of uh, counter-narcotics operations, internationally wise and bilaterally wise. Uh, I wouldn't dwell on uh, many details, just several examples, for ex uh, like uh, we have very good anti-narcotic alliance, which is called uh, uh, Central Asia Anti-Narcotic Quintet. Uh, 
uh, previously it was quartet, which consisted of uh, our two countries, plus uh, Afghanistan, plus Tajikistan. Uh, recently, uh, Iran joined uh, this format, and so it became quintet. And as for bilateral, the cooperation is very active. We have permanent representative of our anti-drug agency here. And uh, just uh, on the annual basis, we hold uh, military uh, naval exercises together with uh, Pakistan Coast Guard. Uh, and these military exercises, they have special uh, anti-drug uh, intentions, directions. Uh, the name is uh, Arabian Monsoon. Uh, we held it uh, the year before last for the first time. The second time was uh, last December. So uh, this practice will be also widened and of course uh, we believe this will be instrumental in preventing the illegal narcotic flows uh, from uh, the areas where drugs are produced to the areas where they are consumed, Russia included of course. And Excellency, now let's talk about the regional stability here. And how do you see the dialogue process between Taliban and Afghan government supported by Pakistan, China and United States? And how do you see the future uh, of these talks if they revive these negotiations in future? Well, you know, it's an extremely, extremely difficult case and all the participants should do their best. They should apply uh, their most efforts to uh, facilitate uh, progress in this area. Uh, actually, uh, there was a, a hint, a hint of a breakthrough uh, last year when there was a first official meeting uh, between Afghan government and uh, Taliban uh, here in Mari. And now this, uh, as it is called, uh, coordination quartet, uh, coordination quartet, uh, they are doing a very important job. Uh, as you know, there is a roadmap uh, developed by their countries. Uh, the aim of this uh, roadmap is to uh, facilitate the process of uh, engagement of two sides, uh, from one side Afghan government, from other side Taliban, in a negotiating process uh, to reach negotiations, to reach some implementation phase. And uh, uh, this is, of course, uh, the matter of uh, our hope that participants of this format will uh, finally succeed. As you are aware, there were uh, three meetings. The fourth meeting uh, will take place shortly, uh, I in think, Kabul. in Kabul on 23rd. 23rd. You are absolutely right. And uh, uh, if uh, the aim of uh, convening all the uh, parties of uh, process, I mean, uh, not the quartet, but the uh, quartet is facilitating, I mean, Afghan government and uh, Taliban movement. By the end of this month, of course, it will be a, a breakthrough and uh, it will be a very, very important yes, achievement yeah. on the way of uh, reconciliation and reintegration of uh, Taliban and Afghani society. If it doesn't happen, if this happened later, say in March or whatever, it's not a tragedy because actually what is more important, it is uh, not the uh, time frameworks, but the result. The process is, first of all, result-oriented. So uh, we strongly hope that uh, the process will be succeeded, but it uh, will never succeed uh, without maximum efforts uh, taken by its participants. And Excellency, my supplementary question related to this that uh, your country, Russia, is a very, very important world player and a regional power. What the role your country can play to facilitate this dialogue process between all stakeholders? Well, actually, uh, we are uh, providing assistance to uh, Afghan government in uh, preparing various personnel, in providing a certain uh, conv uh, conventional weaponry to Afghan, uh, not army, but police. Uh, mostly anti-drug police. And uh, of course we strongly support uh, these kind of activities on the international arena and uh, regional wise. Uh, and of course we are also trying to be instrumental in uh, uh, just uh, assisting this process. So far 
so far uh, we are not directly involved uh, here, but we are involved, as I mentioned, in uh, other formats of uh, Afghanistan uh, settlement. And sir, another question that to Excellency I, IS has emerged as a threat not only to the peace uh, in the Middle East, but also uh, the other region. Uh, how do you see that uh, the world will be successful to overcome uh, these threats created by this group? Well, this is a real uh, danger uh, internationally wise. Uh, I think there is no need to comment on uh, absolutely inhuman uh, nature and essence of this uh, terrorist organization. Unfortunately, uh, this organization is uh, expanding its influence in uh, many areas. Uh, we can see uh, something like uh, that uh, similar, uh, just almost similar uh, processes in uh, Libya. We can see uh, similar processes in uh, Afghanistan where they are uh, strengthening their grip, uh, especially in eastern provinces uh, of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, as uh, one of Pakistani uh, top military uh, recently mentioned, uh, they are trying to set their foot in uh, Pakistan as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, Pakistani authorities will prevent uh, this and uh, in this connection we highly appreciate the anti-terrorist uh, efforts of uh, Pakistan army and Pakistan government. Uh, operations are Baaz first of all which uh, uh, is uh, going on successfully which finally managed to uh, just uh, freeing the territory which under the control of uh, extremists and terrorists though they continue to uh, exercise their barbarian act, uh, just concentrating on, so to speak, soft targets like uh, universities, the recent Charsada yes, yes. University uh, incident is one of it. And of course, we are actively participating in uh, anti-IS efforts, uh, first of all in Syria, uh, in accordance with uh, the request of legal Syrian government yes. of uh, President Assad. Uh, the legality of this government is also recognized uh, by Pakistan. Uh, we are delivering uh, surgical strikes uh, against uh, Islamic State and uh, other terrorist organizations uh, like Jabhat al-Nusra. Uh, of course, uh, we are not resorting to mass uh, bombardments and mm, unaimed bombardments like sometimes it is described into press. Because, you know, if we did so, the uh, Syrian army would uh, achieve these uh, successes long, long ago. But uh, we prefer to spare more time, but uh, to inflict less, uh, at least minimum casualties, no casualties among uh, civilian population. Uh, we hit only, um, so to speak, military targets. And, of course, uh, we are also hitting uh, supply routes by Islamic State. Uh, cutting it from uh, their, uh, so to speak, uh, financial assets. You know that uh, they exercise uh, very active uh, trade of uh, oil. This is uh, actually one of their main uh, sources of income. Now, uh, the latest information, they are resorting to uh, just some uh, drug income. So we are also trying to cut this supply uh, routes uh, as well. So uh, this is uh, our form of uh, participation in uh, fighting this uh, menace, which uh, I would describe as the greatest menace to mankind, to humanity of the last several decades. And uh, we shouldn't uh, forget that besides in human nature among this execution, among demolishing cultural assets in Iraq and Syria, uh, the actions of Islamic State uh, caused a wave of uh, refugees and the number of these refugees is uh, counted by uh, hundreds of thousands or it exceeded million and uh, it continues. So it's also, so to speak, credit of Islamic State. So uh, this, this threat should be curbed by 
of course, uh, collective efforts, and we are actively participating there. Uh, we, will, uh, we take a short commercial break here, and then we will resume uh, our talks after a while. Thank you. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, Excellency, uh, as we are aware, that Pakistan and Russia have signed a one of the historic, remarkable project in the field of gas pipelines. And this project is called North-South Gas Pipeline Project between the two countries. How do you see that Pakistan will be successful to overcome the energy crisis prevailing in the country at presently? Well, uh, at presently, there are, I should say, not uh, many ways of overcoming energy crisis because uh, our project, which uh, you mentioned, as well as uh, other regional projects uh, like uh, TAPI project, uh, the flow of gas from Turkmenistan, uh, peace pipeline project uh, of gas from Iran, they are a rather long-term solution and uh, these are very huge. Uh, they are very large-scale projects and of course uh, such uh, projects they uh, require uh, several years to be completed and several years to put into operation. Uh, for example, uh, the completion of uh, our project is uh, somewhere around uh, 2019 because it's uh, quite a lot of work. It is not only uh, laying pipe, you know, it's actually the easiest part of project. Uh, but the gas, uh, in its essence, it uh, doesn't move by itself. So uh, you need to install uh, gas compressors on certain distance from each other to uh, provide flow of a gas. And taking into consideration the length of the pipeline, it is 1,200 uh, kilometers. Of course, of course, it is. Uh, it will take time. Like other projects, like uh, another uh, very important and ambitious projects, uh, which are uh, implemented by our Chinese partners in cooperation with Pakistani partners in the framework of Pakistan-China Economic Corridor. I mean, uh, gas pipeline uh, Gwadar Nawabshah. It also takes years. So. Uh, in, in the sense of short-term solution, uh, there are purchases of uh, LNG. Uh, recently, we witnessed uh, the signing of uh, agreement between uh, Pakistan and Qatar uh, concerning the providing of uh, LNG uh, to Pakistan. And uh, secondly, secondly uh, this issue is also uh, a matter of uh, discussions between uh, Pakistan and Russia because when our uh, Minister of Energy, Mr. Novak, uh, visited Pakistan uh, last October, actually during this visit, as you uh, noted absolutely correctly, uh, this uh, gas pipeline intergovernmental agreement was signed. There were other uh, matters discussed and among them uh, we put forward a proposal uh, concerning providing uh, Russian LNG to Pakistan. The discussions continuing, uh, continued during Mr. Abbas's visit, uh, which I mentioned. So uh, these uh, deliveries, they may be also uh, a tool of uh, shorter time solution of energy crisis in uh, Pakistan. So. Uh, short time. This is also the, uh, just uh, some use of uh, probably solar energy, 
which uh, panels of which they don't take much time to be constructed. And we know that there is quite a huge solar station in Pakistan. And uh, I read in newspapers that there are plans to uh, expand uh, the station. Uh, but uh, if uh, the projects which I mentioned, uh, they will exercise correctly, uh, will be exercised in time, uh, in uh, just a few years, uh, the problem of energy crisis will remain only in memories. Okay. And now, Excellency, let's talk about the uh, bilateral cooperation in the field of defense. And we have seen a tremendous betterment in the recent times in the field of defense between the two countries. But uh, at the moment, what is the status of this defense cooperation? and uh, how many helicopters and other equipment that uh, your country has made a commitment to provide Pakistan so that our forces uh, will be well equipped while eliminating this mess of terrorism from its side. Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, we signed a contract on providing four helicopters, MI-35, uh, last August. Uh, I strongly hope that uh, cooperation in this field will uh, continue. Uh, because it is aimed at uh, our uh, joint uh, task, at solution of our joint task, that is elimination of uh, terrorism, uh, regional-wise and uh, international-wise. Of course, military cooperation, as you understand, is a delicate matter, and uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, premature to disclose the details of these contacts. But uh, I hope that... Uh, this uh, will be continued. This will be continued uh, on also uh, on, on the lines of our uh, agreement in uh, defense sphere, military sphere, which was signed by uh, uh, our Minister of Defense, uh, Mr. Shoigu, uh, to, and uh, your Minister of Defense, Mr. Asif. This is exchange of experience. We know that Pakistan has very vast uh, experience in the sphere of uh, peacekeeping operations. Uh, this is also exchange of visits. Uh, as you know, that uh, last year, uh, so last summer, uh, Chief of uh, Army Staff uh, General Sharif visited Moscow. Then there was a visit of our Chief of Naval Staff to Pakistan. Uh, so these exchanges also continue. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, one of uh, just uh, bright examples of it are these uh, naval maneuvers which I mentioned. Uh, besides this, uh, Pakistani uh, army, they participate in some joint uh, exercises. Your representative uh, visit our uh, exhibitions and our representative visit your exhibitions like uh, IDEAS, for example, which is held in Karachi. Uh, so, well, I should say that's quite a, a multifaceted cooperation as well, uh, which uh, has good prospects. Yes. And Excellency, as uh, in your initial remarks, you have stated that you are not satisfied with the current trade volume between the two countries. How do you describe the economic ties between the two countries? As we have seen that many commissions have been set up to coordinate and to extend the cooperation in the field of trade and economy. But how do you see the future of economic collaboration between the two countries? Uh, you know, we are actually uh, trying to analyze uh, what's happening there in our trade. Uh, actually, the year before last, uh, there was a fall in our metal exports to Pakistan. Last year, there was a fall of our uh, grain export. Uh, the saldo of uh, our uh, trade is in Pakistani favor, and it uh, grows. If uh, the year before last, it was roughly uh, 2 to 1 in uh, Pakistan favor. Now, it's uh, roughly 3 to 1 in uh, Pakistan favor. Uh, we see the uh, more or less stable dynamics in Pakistani export to Russia, but there are certain items like sport goods, which last year they grew threefold. It's uh, very good, I think. And uh, we are trying to uh, promote direct contact between businessmen. We are trying to settle the issue of awareness. Uh, from time to time, I am visiting 
various Pakistani cities, and I am meeting with uh, businessmen, with uh, chambers of trade and commerce of uh, various cities like Karachi, Lahore, uh, Faisalabad, uh, other cities, and uh, I plan to uh, continue this work. Uh, I should note also the active work in this uh, field of our honorary consul in Lahore, Mr. Habib Ahmad, who is a uh, very known Pakistani businessman, uh, who was very instrumental in organizing uh, trips of uh, Pakistani uh, businessmen to Russia. Uh, sooner or later it should uh, bring fruits. Unfortunately, we cannot force business uh, to uh, conclude such and such deal, but uh, what we are doing it is to uh, help to create an uh, environment which would be uh, favorable for uh, various exchanges, for uh, mutual investments. Uh, and uh, I strongly hope that uh, sooner or later uh, our efforts they will uh, bring results. That is, of course, beyond uh, established channels like these commissions, uh, forums, etc. <coughs> yes. And Excellency, there are reports in the media that might be your president, His Excellency Mr. Putin, may pay a visit to Pakistan next month. But my specific question is that, that mm -hmm. how do you see the coordination uh, between the both countries' leadership which is going on, and how do you mm -hmm. see that the both country leadership are committed and determined to enhance the cooperation in many fields. Uh, definitely. Uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, there is uh, no visit of uh, President Putin uh, in a uh, short time prospect because uh, each visit should be uh, duly prepared. Uh, there should be some substance uh, of the visit in form of some treaties, uh, signed agreements. Uh, but, uh, of course, of course, we are not denying the possibility of uh, our leaders' visit to Pakistan in a more distant perspective. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, our leaders do not have contacts. Uh, the last contact took place in uh, Russia, in Ufa. Uh, it was a contact between uh, President Putin and Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Uh, on the uh, margins of Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, Summit. Next summit uh, will take place in uh, Tashkent uh, this year, and I'm sure they will be also meeting uh, between our leaders, and uh, this meeting will be, as usual, fruitful because it gives impetus to further development uh, of relations. It, it gives them additional dynamics. Uh, what I should say, and uh, I strongly hope that it would be marked by the completion of the process of Pakistan uh, together with India becoming the full-fledged members of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And Excellency, uh, let me ask the question that uh, what is the point of view of your country regarding civil war in Syria? And as we know that the government of Turkey has accused your country that uh, your country is not cooperating and not targeting the IS and other mm -hmm. some terrorist organization? Well, as for targeting uh, IS and uh, other terrorist organization, we uh, target uh, this organization. Uh, the accusation of uh, Turkish side is uh, groundless. I already explained the situation with our airstrikes. Uh, they are surgical, they are directed only against military personnel, so to speak military personnel. We cannot uh, call uh, IS and other terrorist organization militants as military personnel, they are other terrorists. Uh, and at cutting supply routes. Uh, secondly, what should I also emphasize that uh, these actions, they are uh, taken by, uh, on the request of the legal government uh, of Syria. And uh, as you can see, they are bringing success. Uh, the Syrian army managed to liberate certain uh, key uh, cities from uh, Islamic State fighters, from Jabhat al Nusra fighters. Uh, maybe there is a kind of difference in approaches uh, on uh, Jabhat al Nusra, but we uh, consider that it is a terrorist organization. Uh, for example, uh, because it is affiliate of Al-Qaeda. 
And as for uh, actions of this uh, opposition, they are also made known. They, you know, even so to speak, moderate opposition, they sometimes uh, mark uh, their uh, actions by very inhuman acts, atrocities. For example, I don't remember, maybe two years ago, there was a story when uh, some field commander of uh, moderate opposition, uh, they captured uh, a Syrian soldier, so he cut uh, a raw liver uh, or heart from him and he ate it uh, just before the cameras. It's um, cannibalism. It's so this is uh, the face of certain representatives of moderate opposition as well. But we do not target moderate opposition. Though we have uh, some uh, complaints on them because uh, they are uh, supplied uh, by weapons, uh, with weaponry and with ammunition by uh, Western countries, by the United States. But it happens so that uh, in many cases this ammunition uh, is not used against Islamic State but falls into hands of the, this very Islamic State and other terrorist organization. Of course, uh, what is happening in Syria uh, it doesn't have just a country-wise dimension, it has very wide regional dimension because uh, other uh, countries are also involved there, uh, uh, not only Turkey but Saudi Arabia, we know about this anti-terrorist coalition. Then as uh, it is known, uh, Islamic State uh, covers not only Syria, it covers other territories, I spoke about it. And uh, the, in Iraq there are very severe fighting against uh, Islamic State, maybe it is not noticeable uh, so clearly, but uh, it's not less severe. And uh, there are certain successes uh, like uh, liberation of uh, certain uh, Iraqi cities uh, from uh, Islamic State grip. So uh, this is a very, very important problem because uh, we see what happens when uh, the vacuum of power created and uh, some strong leaders, which uh, of course cannot be said that they were uh, just ideal leaders like uh, Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein. We saw what happened uh, after uh, their departure when the vacuum is created and this vacuum is uh, immediately uh, just filled by uh, radical Islamists, terrorists like Islamic State, now Libya, uh, there is a varying faction, just a various territory, territories, and the country is in a very desperate state politically and economically. The situation in Iraq is uh, also known. It is torn by war for already uh, many years. So uh, we do not want the similar fate to uh, uh, Syria. The part of uh, Syria, as, as you know, uh, population, Alawites, the uh, Shias, and uh, you know that Islamic State, they do not have mercy to those who profess other uh, religion, not even other religions, like other, uh, so to speak, uh, other trends in religion, for example, these factions of religion, because they don't have mercy to uh, Muslims as well. There are mass executions uh, of uh, Muslims which do not profess this uh, radical point of view which are shared by Islamic State. So you can imagine what could happen with these uh, millions of people of another face. So we are trying to prevent this massacre. And lastly, uh, at, the, at the conclusion, I would like to ask from you that how do you see this multi oppression terrorism to eradicate this mass of terrorism from its soil? And uh, how do you see the security situation in the country presently? Well, uh, I spoke with some of my uh, colleagues uh, in diplomatic corps, uh, which have uh, more experience of being here. Uh, some of them, uh, they have already for the second time here, and they have a clear uh, possibility, clear uh, capacity to uh, make certain uh, comparing comparisons. And uh, the unilateral um, opinion is that the security situation in Pakistan 
improved visibly. Even uh, me, though I am here for uh, only two years, as I mentioned, my third years only started, uh, I also noticed it. Uh, there is less incidence in, uh, say, uh, adjacent areas, country-wise. Uh, of course, we monitor the statistics, and uh, we have progress in uh, uh, progress. I mean, in terms of that, uh, the number of terrorist acts diminished considerably. Uh, this is, of course, one of the results of Zarbia's operation and similar operation like Haber operation. But at the same time, uh, we can see that uh, this operation, they need to be continued and uh, there, are, there is a terrorist presence here. Uh, there are uh, terrorist acts continuing, though not uh, with the same pace, so to speak. And we strongly hope that uh, efforts uh, in this, uh, on the lines of this uh, anti-terrorist plan of uh, Pakistan, it uh, finally brings its uh, ultimate results and uh, this problem sooner or later uh, will be curtailed. Uh, but uh, it's, not, it's not easy thing, uh, I think, and Pakistani government understands it, and we understand it because it does not depend uh, on internal factors only, it depends on uh, external factors because it's not known that, it's uh, not a secret that uh, a lot of uh, Pakistani uh, terrorists from Tehrika Taliban in Pakistan, they relocated to uh, neighboring countries from where they uh, prepare and uh, their terrorist acts plotting. Uh, for example, uh, as far as I can understand this terrorist act in a military school, then in Charsada, they were planned partly from uh, this territory. And of course, we see that uh, Afghanistan government is also taking efforts to curb it. And uh, of course, what is needed is uh, concerted efforts in fighting terrorism along along with uh, the line on uh, starting negotiation process, reconciliations, which we already discussed. And by combination of these two directions, uh, we can uh, witness the improvement of this uh, situation in uh, general, in large scale. Though, though we can see improvement uh, even now. But still, a lot of work is to be done. Excellency, thank you very much uh, for your thank precious you. time for our program. And we have very constructive, meaningful uh, discussion and conversation with you on bilateral relation. I am, again, very uh, highly obliged to you for your time. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. And uh, it, is, it is the end of the program of yours. Thank you very much.